Welcome everybody out there in the internet and the wiles of the ether. I don't know. I just made that up. Um, it's like Ooh. a it's like a Zelda game, right? Wilds Finding of the ether. Wilds of the ether. Anyway, welcome to episode sixty nine of Sis and Big Pops Culture. As always, I am Big Pops Todd Turner, also known as Mosaic Fan Art. And sweet friends, I am Hannah Joe, aka Sis, and together we're an adult daughter and father duo. We dive into all things geek, nerd, and fandom. Every episode is family friendly. Friends of the family. Indeed yeah, I like do. that. The, what did I call it? The Ethernet? It's like a Zelda game. That was really cool. I just came up with that on the I called it Tear Tears of the of the you called Wild. It Tears of the Wild. Tears. Which was funny. Did you call it Tears oh, of the Wild? I did. It's yeah, Breath we of had the that Wild. Kind of Tears of the kingdom. Tears of my breathing kingdom. <laughs> anyway, welcome to, I don't know what I'm talking about. You're Hannah, fine. Ex explain to us yes. what we're supposed to be talking about. Friends, welcome. Today, we are going to chat, as always, about nerd news. I don't have much. Dad doesn't have much. Ain't much going on in our corners of the world. In your corners, there might be lots going on. But hey, we report the news we like. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's a fact. Um, we are going to chat about um, what we've been watching, as well as um, Pops's pool list. And then we're going to review a comic. We're going to review Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Yes. And, which I have in my possession because our, my dear sweet papa let me borrow it. And then we are going change to- Change of plans. Change of plans. Change of plans from last time because you texted and said- this Supergirl movie is awful. We're not watching it. And I said, <laughs> okay. And yeah, so wanna... we watched Indiana Jones, Rage of the Lost Ark instead. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Okay, so, can yeah. we just pause before we get into it though? Yeah, what? We sit down to watch Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I'm just chatting with Trevin, just talking about our road trip and things like that. And he's like, Hannah, I'm trying to watch the movie. I'm like, yeah. We've, Has you never you've, seen it? You've seen this movie a hundred times. And he had never seen Indiana Jones, wow. Raiders of the Lost Ark, until last night. Oh, wow. I was like, baby, what? I know. He had never Goodness. seen it. He had never. Well, and I was just trying to talk to him and like chitter chat. And he, he didn't like, want to do that because then you miss all the great music. He's like, I'm and watching the, sound. the movie, babe. I'm like, oh, man. All right. Wow. Yeah. Well, we're going to jump into that later at the end. And hopefully, just, you, you guys you have seen that, Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know Park. that immediately. I well, that was I'm, wild. Good deal. I'm glad that his his uh his knowledge base has now been widened. Mm. There you go. Hannah, what oh, do we do first? The live video stopped. No, it's still going. Okay. Maybe I'm losing my mind. No, still going. Okay, good. Never On mind. On my then. end anyway. Never mind. So I'm anywho, that's all right. For those of you listening to this on the podcast. We do do a live Sorry. video stream and we have a chat mm. on uh, Facebook and you're more than welcome to join us. You it's, should hang with us. Look up KY Medicine Man. Yeah, that's it's, it's under my personal Facebook page. Anyway, okay. um, yeah. So Nerdness. that's right. Take it away, Tom Brokaw. You don't even know who that is, do you? Do you? No. Okay, I didn't think so. <laughs> no. Sorry, Bob. All right. That's all right. Okay. Do you want me go because I don't want so, to take. Do you, you remember got. many, many moons ago when I told you that Disney had started a Star Wars LARP? Which explain LARP for people who don't okay. know what that means. Yes, I'm a nerd. So LARP is a live action role play, and okay. how LARPs work is you create a character. It can be you. It could be someone that's like you. It can be someone completely different. You can be and a vampire you, in New Orleans. You can be a vampire in New Orleans. That is a LARP that exists. If you were curious, um, it is like a the vampire masquerade 20s, 50s, and like dark LARP. Um, so you can you pay money to go to places and do things. dark LARP. And no, it's like they have right. some that are like fun and that are family fan okay. family friendly Very and much are like, like fantasy. And then they have you... some where you're literally a pirate on the Baltic Sea. And then they have some where you're in wizard school. And they have it's... some when did you ever watch the Hawkeye miniseries? Yeah. Yes. There were LARPers. There were in... LARPers in that. But they yeah. were just like LARPing in a park. Like there right. are like LARP experiences Parkers. where Parkers. you pay some cash. 
Oh, really? To like do stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's like, there's this crazy. girl that I follow on YouTube, and she literally was a pirate. Did she like only have a peg leg? No. Did you know she... what? Hey, did she have a patch over eye because you know no, what? No, you PD create said? your own backstory. The eye, she the was eye. Like, a she was like a runaway bride. And... She was a runaway bride who joined a pirate. Okay. You're being silly. You remember PD? And yes, that joke? I know exactly what you're talking about. It's a kid friendly, so we can't talk about it on here. <laughs> Anyway, anyway so, so Disney, Disney had one. They had a Star Wars one, and it was okay. called the Galactic Cruiser Hotel. And there were all sorts of different price points for this LARP experience. Now, it's Disney, so we know that the price points are very high. Um, apparently, it was not good, or it was too expensive. And so not it well is closing received. in September. Oh, the Galactic Cruiser is closing. Where does this exist? The currently? Galactic Cruiser Hotel. I don't know. I is it in California or is it in Florida? I think probably Florida. Florida. Gotcha. Florida. Well, Florida. Well, I didn't know. Yeah. I'm looking to see. I wonder how many find. vacations um, Sally uh, Bell Wilson has uh, set Done up there? to go on the no on the Galactic Cruiser. <laughs> Probably none. I honestly think it was very. Ex- oh, Sally knows. Really? It was Florida. All right, good deal. She got. She beat me. But <clears throat> man, it would have a Star Wars LARP would have been sick. Yeah, but I think right now the only people that can afford to do that are these big stars that are showing up in the Mandalorian, yeah. like uh, Lizzo and Jack Black. I can't afford to go to a Star and Wars Christopher LARP. Lloyd. And um, the dude from The Big Sick, he was also in The Eternals. I know exactly comedian. his face. He was in a radio commercial, and I knew it was him because he's a very Big distinct sick is voice. So good. If you've not seen that movie, you should watch that movie, Hannah. Anyways, it's I, yeah, we watched All it, right. Dad. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Well, goodbye, Bye, LARP. Bye, Disney Galactic Cruiser, LARP Hotel. LARPs. Still LARPs. All right. What else you got, Hannah? That's, oh, do you want to do one? No, you go ahead. I don't want to take if okay. you just have like two or three. Yeah, I only have a couple. Um, they're making a Dungeons and Dragons channel. Okay, so I don't know what you mean. A TV channel? They're making a, like a D&D channel and it's going to be free but ad supported. And they what have going to show on They it? have new series that they're releasing. There's an in a 1980s movie or a TV show yeah, that they're going to age. There was an old movie in the eighties called Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. That movie's going to be on it. And they're also okay, going to do some movie. third party content as well. So right now, if you want to watch anything about D and D just go to Twitch or YouTube. Well, that's what I'm saying. So they're, they're doing, they're going to have third party content. Oh, I just can't imagine that there would be enough to make money. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, it's not to make money. It's free. It's free and it's oh, ad supported. That's what I'm saying. They're making money. They're making money off of you. Don't have, have to buy a subscription to watch the DMZ channel. You just have to sit and watch ads. It's almost like we're going oh, back to a, watching TV. Yeah, this is what everything is now. So, P.S. LOL. I started to watch the Dungeons and Dragon movie. Yes. I couldn't do it. Oh, why? Um. Okay, this movie's been out forever, so I'm just going to spoil one little part. So, Hugh Grant's character. Sucks. Anybody who turns a child against their parents, I just immediately, I just you had, automatically. The payoff is good, Dad. It doesn't matter. I'm like, I can't watch this. Because he sabotages the daughter-father relationship. And I just, I was like, you got to be kidding me. And I turned it off. Which is the benefit of not buying a ticket. Right. I can just turn it I off. I think that you are letting yourself be deprived of a good movie going experience. I don't like the fact that the kid. I did, Dad. Thinks- I literally screamed in the movie theater and Trevin told me to be quiet because we were so <laughs> mad about it. Well, good. We are so much alike. I was like, that. that's not cool. And See, if, was like, if I were at a movie theater and had a, and had a giant remote, I would have went blip, click, <laughs> turned it off and walked out. It's honestly, it was, like it's the payoff is worth it. All right. I'm, I'm, so I'm, can I tell, can I spoil it for you? Are you, are you ever going to watch it? I might. So no, don't spoil it for me. Okay. Well, yes. Yeah, payoff it. is that good. Go ahead. Spoil it. Okay. Spoilers. If you haven't watched the Dungeons and Dragons movie. So this entire time he's going to get the, 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 to bring thing, back her mom, to bring back the mom. Yeah. 
-hmm. And then at the very end, Letty dies protecting her protecting her and he realizes that she's had a mom this entire time and he's being selfish gotcha. and so he brings back letty with the you. stone instead of okay, his wife cool All right. and then she the daughter realizes oh my dad will sacrifice and protect me and so they become oh. they all they go, reunite they, and yeah, who reunite. does Hugh grant like get dissolved by Hugh a, grant a flan because- or- <laughs> One of those little cubes or whatever. The, the gelatinous cube. Yeah. Um, Hugh Grant gets it's his right. comeuppance. Okay, good. Comeuppance. I like that word. He gets his comeuppance. All right. You got anything else? Um, yes. Um, there's gonna be a live action how to train your dragon. Okay, this was at the bottom of my list. Do we need this? No. Okay, I was like, why are we doing a live Not action? Not at all. Train your dragon. The cartoon is so the good. The cartoon is literally so epic. I don't know. Like, it has to be exactly the same. Yeah, and what's his name? Jay Burchell. Jay, what's his name? The guy who was the voice of the of the guy who only had one leg. I have no idea. Anyway, he, he was so good at it. No, 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 but he was so good. I can't, but they're, they won't, it won't be him. Right? Well, and Hiccup's voice people. is just so, you, is so distinct. Yes. I don't know. He, well, I, they casted. Thinking, they casted two kids. They casted Mason Thames and Nico Parker to yeah, be no pick up an Astrid. Well, no idea. Mason was in the Black Phone, and Nico Never, oh, was in that, like The Last of Us or something like that. Okay, great family friendly shows that everyone can watch. Not that is not true. <laughs> well, not I true. mean, I wonder if the dra- are they going to make the dragons spooky? Well, no, I mean, it'll all have to be computer That's generated. That's what I'm saying. Are, but are they going to be scary dragons? No, I'll just, no, they're going to be that dragon from Never Ending Story. <laughs> <laughs> the dog dragon. Nah. <laughs> oh, well, I, I saw that and then I thought, what? I mean, we're just live actioning all the cartoons. I think it's dumb. Make up, make up your own story. Be original. I know. I know. I mean. Love well, Hannah. Well, that, in that regard. Um, have you heard of One Piece? No. One Piece is the anime that has like over a thousand episodes. Is that the girl with the thing in her mouth? No, that's Demon Slayer, which oh. is really good, actually. <laughs> the girl with the thing in her mouth. If you've been to any Comic Con in the oh, world, everybody's there's a girl the with the thing in her mouth. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's the Demon Slayer. I'm yes. explaining it really bad. It's it's not inappropriate. It's to keep her it's from like weird. biting. It's from it's like a, a a bit, like a horse bit. Well, it's weird, is what it is. It's because she will eat you, because well, she's possessed, but doesn't perhaps, want to be. And her brother wants to save her. Oh, that's the whole demon slayer. Okay, that that's makes the sense. whole entire purpose of the of the show. Oh, that's cute and gross. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Well, One Piece has over it's a has over a thousand episodes and they are turning it in to a live action netflix show well they did so good with the last one i know what uh cowboy bebop it went out fast like one season so this has 10 episodes i what are they gonna do with a thousand episode manga and do 10 episodes (laughs) So season one out of a hundred. Dude, I have no idea. I know. And you can do stuff in anime that you just can't do in real life. That's the straw hat, a uh, little mosaic I made that my friend Andy bought. Yes. Yeah. That's one piece. It follows Luffy cool. and the, um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I saw that. Um, did you know that Wonder Woman has a daughter? No. The, I didn't either. But Wonder Woman comic book getting ready to hit issue 800. Ooh. And Tom King, the author of the Supergirl comic we just read. Oh, yeah. Taking, taking over writing duties. And they introduce her daughter, Trinity. That's her, that's her superhero name. Her real name is Lizzie, which I sort of like as her superhero name. And apparently this takes, this is in the future. So it's not like right now. So she's grown, you know, she's in her twenties. It looks like, Um, and I don't know how that's going to affect the comic book, but that was a big deal. So issue 800 is coming up. I think we're on 790. I think I just got 799, honestly, just recent. Mm -hmm. 
So next month, cool. there'll be, yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know we were getting a Wonder Woman daughter. Wonder Woman daughter named I thought, see, Lizzie. Wonder Woman was made out of clay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they're making her daughter. How's that going to do- go? I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer either. But anyway, I thought that was cool. That's cool. Um, so have you paid attention to the secret invasion thing coming from Marvel? The new on series. comics or in like it's in a series it was comics and they have a new comic out but there's going to be like a six or seven episode show called secret invasion i'm not watching their stuff because for me it's very hit or miss okay like the shows i know that yeah. you really like them i do like them yeah um so secret invasion is going to be a nick fury show for the most point cool and remember the scrolls yes so, uh, is it like af- right after Captain America? I think we're going to find out that a whole lot of these heroes have been scrolls the whole time. That'd be sick. So, do you think we'll get Coulson back? What is do you Coulson think? Coulson a about scroll? That? Was he a scroll? In Secret Invasion, what happened was the scrolls replaced a bunch of the superheroes with scrolls, but they had to keep the they had to keep the originals alive. For some reason, in order to keep tapping into their memories and all that kind of stuff. And like their powers? Mm, no, because they could pretty much mimic powers or whatever. But maybe, I don't know. It's comic book, right? So they'll make up some rule. But anyway, I just read where... Uh, well, here's the thing. What? I'm sorry, you go first. You just no, read no, no, that no. where... I read that Clark uh, Gregg said, oh yeah, I'm up for doing Marvel. I'm not, I'm not, that door's not shut. So... is Are they retconning all of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I don't know. All of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I don't know. Well, no, I it's loved that show. I think it's considered part. I can't remember. Because he didn't die. No, but they think he did. Right, he was turned Alien into like him. a, yeah, like a android or something. I don't know. They, they creed him. Like they fr- yeah, they like frost giant or creed him or something. It was a Cree. Yeah, it was Cree blood. They put Cree blood in him or something. I don't know. And he didn't die. Right. He went to Tahiti. You went to Tahiti. What a wonderful Which is place. A magical, a magical, magical place. place. Yeah. Right. A magical so place. I was thinking of all the so who have we lost in the Marvel universe? Iron Man. Iron Man. Natasha. Natasha. That's it. Yeah. And Colson. Gamora. Yeah, but Gamora came back. Right? She's mm-hmm. still there. So I wonder if we can get one of them back. What do you think? Who knows? Do you think we will? Interesting. What's the what's the percentage of one of them coming back? High. <laughs> High. That's a lame. I don't know. It's lame know to either. me. It is lame. That is. But the scroll thing, I think, is going to be cool. Sc- I mean, I it. think scrolls are cool. I think, I think they it's even, spooky. Yeah. Mention the cows and everything. I hope that they meant they turn them into they cows. Mention, I hope they do too. Yeah. Fantastic Four interesting. fans. Interesting. Interesting. So my last bit of news okay, on is me. that this September is the 60th anniversary of the Doctor. <gasps> yes. And they're doing it's an episode be, with Tenet and Tate. It's going to be on Disney Plus, I think. What? Doesn't Disney own the... I think Disney's got Doctor Who now. Guess who's coming back? Stephen Moffat. Well, King. So here's the deal. It's called Doctor Who Once in Future, and it's going to be a series. It's like um, for and starts in September, and they've got back um, Sylvester McCoy, who was the seventh doctor, is going to be in it. Uh, Georgia Tennant, the daughter's doc, the doctor's daughter, who is Tennant's wife, is coming is coming back. Um, Colin Baker is the as the curator, which you saw in another one of the episodes. I believe um, another one of the hmm. doctors, like at the fifth doctor, maybe, um, and Davros, the <gasps> yeah, and apparently a surprise big bad. I don't know what that is. They but just what bring ha- back the master. I don't know. You don't like the master, though. I think he's so lame. I think that that was a cheap trick. I got gotcha. you. Lol. Well, that's like deal. I love Doctor Who. That's like the one thing that I'm like really. Really? <laughs> and, and Trevin Everything else know. is completely plausible, but that doesn't make sense. He's the last of the Time Lords. That's the whole yeah. shtick. 
with the with the baby doctor in the bird cage. The bird That's doctor. That's so dumb. <laughs> so listen, here's what happens. Okay. The doctor goes to regenerate because as he does, right? Mm. But something happens and he starts degenerating and going back. That ain't yes. Good. No, but what a great premise. That's a cool premise. So yeah, September, it's coming. So does Hell's he in. just lose all of his memories then? I don't know. I don't of know. 11, 12, he starts 13. having like a, he starts having a, a cri- an existential crisis, I guess. And that's where we follow. We are. Oh, can we switch to binging? Are we good to switch to binging? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. We are finally at Smith's last season and the introduction of the ending of the ponds, the introduction of Clara. Who I didn't like at the beginning, but then she grew on. I me. liked her at the beginning and didn't like her at the end. That's hilarious. I'm the opposite. When she anyway. got to, there are a couple episodes with Capaldi that I liked, but then towards the end of Capaldi, it just kind of blah, blah. And I, I stopped watching what he said. I know. Subtitles, my guy. You know, I'm know. a subtitles girl. I do know. Yep. Um, anyway, what were you going to say? Um, we're watching, we finally started watching Asylum of the Daleks, which is one of my, I think if I had to make a top 10 what favorite episodes list, they go to the planet of where it's just like all of the Daleks that have like gone crazy. To rescue Oswin Oswald. It's when Clara's first introduced. Oh, she's inside the Dalek. Mm -hmm. Got you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We started watching that one. Possible girl. And yeah, the impossible girl. Mm -hmm. Um, The girl who he gets, he gets the impossible girl and the girl who waited. Yep. Chef's kiss. (laughs) Um, He, uh, something I just thought was so funny. He's like, it was like, how much trouble are we in? And he said, on a scale from one to 10, 11. And it's because he's. He's the eleventh doctor, yeah. Very, very, yeah. That was on a scale from one to ten, eleven. And I was like, okay, that was drama, drama king, drama Mm. king. So what else? So Doctor Who, I'm still watching. Oh, I have been watching Jewish matchmaking. What on Netflix? Oh, Hannah, you ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> I've been watching Jewish matchmaking. I've also been watching matchmaker, matchmaker, Indian matchmaking. A match. mm-hmm. How's find that go? Me a find, do, catch me a catch. Me a catch, which is actually Jewish matchmaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've been watching Jewish matchmaking. Are you watching it from sunrise, sunset, sunrise? I really, sunset. really enjoy it. This lady is very funny. Um, and I've been watching Indian matchmaking for much longer than I've been watching Jewish matchmaking. So I used to I watch an, it. And so I'm an, on this new season of Jewish an matchmaking. Asian, Asian matchmaking thing. Um, it was on Mulan. Oh. <laughs> oh, that I was song like waiting go? for you to tell How'd me. that song go? I can't remember. Um, uh, ancestors, hear my plea. Help me not to make a fool of me. <laughs> Way to not go, Ming. To dishonor my family tree. Keep my father standing tall Gosh, scarier than the undertaker songs. we are meeting our matchmaker there it is yes there we go that's hilarious <laughs> so, but such a that's a clever line scarier yeah. than the undertaker so hey, yeah jewish, jewish matchmaking on netflix jewish matchmaking I, on netflix and there was something that trevin and i started watching and i was like this is so dumb i can't watch it anymore oh yeah and i have no idea what it was well think about it i started what wait so I started watching Mrs. Davis. You? Yes. On, I think it's on Paramount. Yeah. So I got through like three episodes and it is out there. First of all, it is definitely informature because <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm, I'm like, it is, it starts out and they burn the, uh, Knights Templar at the stake to try to find the Holy Grail. And then they go and they bust into a convent and we go, we know you all are working with the, with the Knights Templar. You let us tell us where the Holy Grail is. And as that guy's talking and pointing at these, all these nuns at a table, all of a sudden the sword comes and like slices his head off and it's a nun. And she's like, we don't work with the Knights Templar. 
We are the Knights Templar. Knight. And all of a sudden, <laughs> they all pull swords out of this table. And it's like, like, slice and dice for like, I was like, what? It that completely silly. caught me off guard. It was so funny. Uh, and, and it's gruesome, but it's humorous, you know? Mm. And the way they introduce uh, the... I can't remember what the nun's Mrs. name is because her name is her isn't Mrs. Davis. The issue is there is an AI mm. like Siri, and everybody's walking around with their little earbuds in, and this AI wants this nun to go on a quest for her, and the nun doesn't like the AI because she said somehow she believes that that's what caused the death of her father. So she goes, "I'm not talking to it," and they're like, "To be like." You would just be like walking down the street, you know, like, and then someone would just stop and say, Mrs. Davis would like to talk to you. And then she would talk through those people. It's crazy. Gross. And so what Mrs. Davis wants her to do is find the Holy Grail. And she, cause she believes she can do it and she would offer her anything she wants. And she goes, fine, I'll do it. And here's what I want. If I find you the Holy Grail, I want you to turn yourself off. Oof. And the AI says, deal. However, by the time we're done, you won't want me to turn myself off. So that's what the thing is. Well, she better get a different wish. It's hilarious. The show is got some really, it's offbeat wackadoodle humor that I like mm. that some people will go, this is terrible. I can't watch this. I think it's hilarious. So I'm through like three or four, three episodes, maybe four episodes. And that's about it because we've been watching NBA basketball. It been was a boy humor thing. Oh, was it? That yes. says it all right there. Toots and and giggles. It was a boy humor thing on like Netflix or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is dumb. Turned it and off. then we changed it. I've also been reading, um, I'm going back and rereading Birthright again because my Fun. friend CJ finally got all 10 volumes. So that's like, 50 to 60 comics and i think we're going to sit down and talk about them so i'm just Fun. trying to and tomorrow do it yeah so i'm da- trying to download as many of those as i can before the first of the month when my hoopla thing resets so which is in two days i know so yeah that's it that's what i'm doing right on right on well hannah what do we want to do now um do you want a pool list yeah let's do pops pool list Pops pull list. Explain what that is. Um, yeah. So, friends, my dear sweet papa is going to share with us his pull list. And a pull list, for those of you who do not know, is a list that you give the proprietor of your local comic book shop, which LCS. essentially um tells them what you are collecting. That way they can pull from their inventory what you are interested in and save it for you. That way you have your lovely little stack of things that you're collecting so you don't run out of the things and it's right yeah. there for use. So dad's going to share with us one of the big, two, one of the, one each of the big two. So a DC and a Marvel. He's also going to share with us an independent as well as his new number one. So if you wanted to go pick a book off the shelves and start collecting today, you could start there as well as his book of the week, which is what he enjoyed the bestest this week. Yeah. Something cool. Interesting. Not cool. So um, one of the big distributors for comic books is called Diamond Distri- Distributors. And they've been on everybody's doo-doo list for a little while. But anyway, Uh-oh. a semi-wrecked hauling a whole bunch of comics and a whole bunch of stores did not get their books last week. Marvel Uh-oh. and IDW is what they missed. I, I went to visit Nate up in Indiana and we went to a comic book shop there. They had like five new titles and that was it. Dang. No Marvel, no IDW. They basically had a couple image and maybe two or three DC. And that was all they had. And they were like, uh, they probably won't be getting it. So those books may be shorted. Um, really? Yeah. They may not get any, get them. So Dang. people might have to get them on a secondary market like eBay or something. Yeah. So here's what I got. Ooh. Okay. So my, uh, for my Marvel book is called Fury issue one. And this is a, a big boy. It's a little oversized, so it's five ninety nine, dollars a little bit expensive. Um, and it is a Nick Fury book because I wondered if it was. 
<laughs> it's 60 years, commem- commemorating 60 years. That's sweet. And so Nick Fury now looks like um, Samuel L. Jackson. As you should. But Nick Fury used to be a white guy with an eye patch. Right on. So <laughs> it's really funny. So what happened was back in the 90s, Marvel decided to make their lines a little more uh, edgier. So they called it the Ultimate Universe, Marvel Ultimate. So they had Ultimate Spider-Man, Ultimate Avengers, Ultimate X-Men, Ultimate Fantastic Four. And the uh, the artist and the writer at the time really thought Samuel L. Jackson would be great as Nick Fury. So they drew their Nick Fury in this Ultimate Universe to look like Samuel L. Jackson before he ever played Nick Fury for Marvel. That's really cool. I just Googled it. I, I literally just Googled Nick Fury white guy and uh-huh. I found him. Yeah, yeah, from Agents of Shield. So now <laughs> they've retconned all this stuff to where that Nick Fury is the father of this Nick Fury. Cool. And now, and now the old Nick Fury is like he's called the Unseen. He sort of works for the Watcher, Uatu, the Watcher. And um, so right this on. follows uh, Nick Fury through a bunch of different uh, um, stories with one cohesive. Uh, villain in it and it basically sets it up for the reintroduction of shield because as of right now shield doesn't exist in the comic book or the movies right Mm. but they bring in shield back and they're calling it some type of legal thing i don't know but and it's headed by uh, maria hill yeah 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 yeah. it was a good book i what agents of shield the tv show bopped i liked it yeah. Um, yeah. I'm a, a Fitzsimmons shipper. High key. Fitzsimmons water? Fitzsimmons shipper. I like I don't them. know what that means. What's shipper mean? I ship them together. What does that mean? Like that you are like for their relationship. Oh my gosh. I thought you were talking about that Kmart commercial. I no, ship my pants. No, you ship them. That means oh. that you're like, you're like pro their relationship. Yeah, I'm old. I am pro their relationship. So yeah. Fitzsimmons, um, I ship them. I think they're my, cute. My stop it. My DC book is pretty much go back to the well on this all all the time. Nightwing one hundred and four. Um, this ends a story that's been going on in Nightwing for a while with all the Titans with him because now there's a new Titans book. So Teen Titans, and go! this follows. Uh, Nightwing is gifted with superpowers at the end of the last issue. And he's given 24 hours to use them. Basically, a demon gives him powers and is hoping to get him to then sign a contract so he can have this soul of this little girl. And and guess what? Nightwing doesn't do it. Of course he doesn't do it. He's not going to give away the soul of a little girl. So have you ever heard of Batmite? Yes. So (laughs) Nightwing has his own little interdimensional imp that loves him. His name, of course, called Nightmite, right? what he called himself and so he gave the dog superpowers in one ep- ep- one issue and and uh, nightwing too but his nightwing's little billy clubs he imbued them with a one-shot magic thing and he has to say this the magic words to get them to use and it's nightwing is awesome <laughs> so at the end he has to fight this demon even though he doesn't have superpowers anymore and he uses he uses his one off and goes nightwing is awesome he whispers it into his billy clubs and like zaps him and defeat defeats the guy and the little girl then goes to live in themiscara with the wonder women and she's being trained and raised there. and that is her daughter no it's not her daughter it is not her daughter no (laughs) and she her superhero name is nightbuster because her father was named blockbuster who was a villain like the big time villain so she took her dad's name and Nightwing and put them together. Called her Nightbuster. Night. Is what she, it's a little girl. Okay. So you got to give her. She's that. cute. She's a cute. But that's not good. It is funny. She said, "I thought it would just make Dad really mad if I chose you part, hit part of his name, and put your name with it." So anyway, that's funny. Her dad's a little moving, but anyway. So my um, independent is from Vault Comics. Okay. It is the fourth issue of Barbaric. H-E-double hockey sticks to pay. 
And it's the final um, issue of this of this four issue. Yeah. So they've been doing this barbaric comics for a while. This is like the third installment and they only run for like four or five issues, which are perfect. And they are infirmature. They do use some bad is words. It, is it Conan? It's like sort of like that. This is okay. a barbarian who has an enchanted sword, an enchanted axe that talks to him all the time. And it it wants to chop things up because it likes to likes to drink their blood or whatever. Ooh, so the axe is sounds like axe Craven's is, Edge. Axe is silly. It's crazy. And um the bar the barbarian is cursed in a way that he if anybody asks for help and it is a noble request he has to help them so he cannot say no <laughs> so this follows his crew and it's the end of the of the of him being actually in the underworld and getting rescued coming back That's and funny uh, it is so good the art is fantastic um and uh the story is fun i anytime a bar- new barbaric comes out i read i get it because they're great i love them. okay right on hey Based on what you said, I remembered the movie that I watched. What? Do you want to guess what it is? The going movie? on a quest. No, what? Boy humor. Boy humor going on a quest. A uh, Robin Hood, Men and Thieves. Men and we tights. watched Robin Hood, Men and Tights. Okay. And we watched Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh, well, what's wrong with that? I just had forgotten them because it was oh, it was boy humor. That's a great movie. Robin, yeah. Trevin had never seen Robin Hood, Men and Tights. I don't much care for that. But the Monty Python thing is fantastic. Men, men in tights. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so my new Those number. Them, sorry. Gotcha. My new number one is called The Vigil. So DC has been doing a new thing this past month because it's APPI month. What is that, Hannah? Help me. Asian huh? Pacific Islander. Yeah. Month. Heritage month. Yes. So they've been doing a thing where they've released three or four new three new titles maybe four i think it's three and all with um those uh type of characters oh which reminds me in the show mrs davis they have to rescue some the bad guys rescue a scientist whose name is schrodinger have you heard of schrodinger's cat yes is it actually there yes and guess what the cat's name is Mr. Apollo. No, no, that's so Apollo. cool. I just said that because Hannah was holding Apollo. He, which um, is their I have, cat. I have a side story about Apollo that I'll tell you when you're done. Okay. So anyway, so this is one of those books called Vigil, and it is a team book where these uh, characters go and try to like get tech or something that's being misused and take it off the market and but it's um characters i've never heard from before who have okay. fantastic abilities it feels a lot like and one of my friends um had mentioned this feels like old school in the late 80s there was a suicide squad comic book that came out that was really sort of gritty um it was as dark as you could be dark and still have the comic book code gotcha um, not um i don't know just felt forlorn almost this book has that type of a feel. It's really good. I was surprised and it automatically went on my pulls. So I hey. picked it up just to give it a shot. And it's and by I DC. Said, DC, yeah, called cool. the, Vigil. the Vigil. One of the one of the guys has a mask and he pulls the mask off and he puts it on somebody else and then puts the mask back on him and he he becomes them. His face oh, becomes them. Spooky. That's really That's cool. A cool. Okay, so my book of the, book the week. week is the book of the week. This book is called Super Massive 2023. <laughs> Super Massive 2023. Yeah. So in Image Comics, there are a group of comic books that are all within the same universe. Okay. Um, Radiant Black, which is I've which I've had it on here before. Um, Inferno Girl. Um, uh, Dead Lucky. Rogue Sun. I've talked about all those. Mm -hmm. I remember them. I remember Radiant Black the most. So Super Massive is like an like an annual. Like it comes it comes out once a a year and it all of them come together in one story. 
So this is one complete story uniting all those characters. And um, it was really good. It had to do with um, going into some underworld and they, they could, uh, um, whoever got this device could bring one person back to life, sort of like thing. However, you come to find out that's not true. It was a lie. It was whoever can defeat all this stuff becomes the avatar of evil. And that's oh, why perfect. you have to fight. That's why you have to fight all these things. Cause whoever's strong enough to do that is good enough to be, but they realize it and don't do that. But um, yeah, but it was really good. Super the massive. Avatar of evil. Yeah. So I, I like this, all those books in the massive verse. It's what they call it on image. So I, that's I so fun. Pick this up. Yeah. It feels like real good. Um, like original take on superheroes. So that's my books. Woo! I'm sticking to it. All right. Well, Hannah. Indiana Jones. Yeah, we could talk Indiana Jones. So or do you want to talk Supergirl next? Do you want space in between comics or no space? It doesn't matter to me. We can t- it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. Let's do Indiana do Jones. Do? Let's do Indiana Jones. So, so what is it on, it, first of all? We, we had to rent it. It was three dollars to rent. You rented it? Oh yeah. wow. It's it's for free on Peak Paramount Plus. Well, we don't have Paramount Plus. I really don't either, but and so we rented it on Amazon, but we rented it on Amazon and Trevin immediately started looking at buying a Blu-ray. Oh wow. Awesome. So we're gonna this is gonna be one of the 18 movies that we own, which Nathan is Nathan and I were in a used DVD place. Yeah. This weekend they had bazillions. And all their DVDs, all their Blu-ray were three thirty-three. Buy three, get three. So six D, six Blu-rays for ten bucks. That's wild. It was no yeah. Kidding. It was so we we rented it. But three bucks to rent a movie ain't bad. No, that's not bad at all. Do you know what would be nicer? To pay Having- fifty cents at Family Video. Oh, and get pizza. And get pizza at Marco's. There you go, which doesn't exist anymore. Or Little Caesars. That's hilarious. Because it was so, all there was always a pizza window, and it was a Marcos so, or a Little Caesars. <laughs> We've talked about this multiple times. I love podcast. Family Video. They no. knew me. Oh, Dad. News flash. Uh, this is important. Netflix last month stopped mailing out DVDs. News flash. Netflix was still mailing out DVDs. I knew I, that because I tried to get one sent to me. I tried to get one sent to your house so that I could watch a movie that was not there. Hilarious. And they said, I'm sorry, your subscription package does not include DVDs. And I was like, but why? That's hilarious. You would think they would do that for anybody. So anyway, I watched it on Paramount Plus. Um, Red is a Lost Ark came out in 1981, mm-hmm. uh, which is a year after Empire Strikes Back. So this is by George Lucas directed by steven spielberg did you realize that i did um so do you think that this was filmed before he was han solo no 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 because han solo the the first star wars came out in 77 gotcha okay empire strikes back in 80 and then uh 83 was the last one and if i'm not mistaken they did raiders they did raiders in 81 temple of doom in 84 and um the last crusade in 89 and then 2008 and then there's one in 2023 which is coming out um soon i've heard it's doing bad really that the critics don't like it well the critics are critics they don't like themselves so i like myself i do too but i'm not a critic um either i don't get paid to be one at least there you go well what do you think about it what what do do you want to talk Um, about indiana jones i mean I Other love than- this movie. I'm, I honestly just need it. I need you to be shocked with me for a second that Trevin had never seen it. Oh, really? How had he never seen that? I don't know. That's that boy crazy. loves to watch movies. Mm. It was fun to watch it with the person who had never seen it before. And so he didn't have any idea um what was going on and i accidentally spoiled some stuff that i didn't know i was spoiling i went to the bathroom and came back and i was like oh did the girl get captured he's like oh Oh, no we think she's dead what i'm like i'm like oh sorry oh oh Oh, when she gets put in a basket (laughs) here's the deal and you need to trevin tell trevin this you should have known she wasn't dead 
by the music that was playing during yeah, that it was the love thing. music. No, it was like, doo, 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 doo. it was like fun music. It was fun chase music. She doesn't die in the fun chase. Yeah. Music. Yeah. John Williams, score is amazing and how it changes, like um, how it gets real, like uh, when he's in like the, the love of theme soul. feels very Star yes. Wars. Well, I mean, John Williams did them both. But do you, did you hear it? I'd never heard it that clearly before. Yeah. I listened to it. I mean, I, this movie, do you remember how we talked about things being tropey? Yeah. This is tropes before it was tropes. This was tropes before it was tropes. This A was lot the beginning. Of it. The beginning. Like the, of like the knives guy and then the bang. Yeah. The shooting. Like yeah. that's a trope now. Yes. But back then no back then just, no one had ever done this that was before. this was a first yes and so steven spielberg and george lucas were having a little conversation and steven spielberg said i sort of want to want i want to make something like a james bond movie and that's why this feels very much adventure james bondy even though he doesn't have gadgets does he have mm-hmm. a whip he's a whip but, and he's afraid yeah. of snakes afraid of snakes which yeah. is very funny it's funny to me that he's afraid of snakes because what archaeologist is afraid of snakes yeah do you think snakes would be everywhere because snakes would be literally everywhere did you catch alfred molina at the beginning of the movie mm-hmm. doc ock mm-hmm. yeah i did like, yep i Kevin forgot to tell so you funny. something else we were we've been been we've been yeah tell me Ted Lasso. Your mom's been watching Ted Lasso. Good for her. The reason I know that is because she just texted and said, are you okay if I go ahead and watch an episode without you? <laughs> um, so he, like, he had never seen, Trevin had never seen it before. And so like the opening scene where he's like going through the like dungeon at the very to beginning. where this gold statue is at the very, yes. very beginning. He's mm-hmm. like, oh, this is such a, this is such so clever. He's like taking sand out of the bag to like see yeah. how much it weighs. And I'm I like, know. what? It's good. That would be fun to watch it with somebody who hasn't seen it. But it Remember was, we it was, talked about if you could watch a movie, never seeing it before, which movie Indiana would you Jones really would be a good pick. Heck yeah. Indiana the Jones f- would be a good pick pick and it was so funny to watch because i remember the first time that i watched it you were like okay girl something scary's coming up you might want to close your eyes i'll tell you when it starts and when it's over like when the like the presence of the lord came comes through and like oh yes wrecks everyone yes and like the guy's mm-hmm. face literally melts mm-hmm. and i was like dad told me to close my eyes the first time i watched this because it's a little creepy because his face melts creepy. It's you gotta love the practical effects, though. The practical I mean, effects were really cool in that. It's it's sort of cheesy now, yeah. but it was made in 1981. Well, it, it holds well. It like holds very well, and everyone that, knows it. That it everybody knows so well. Oh, the the face melting scene is the bomb. Oh yeah, the guy goes. Ah! No! <laughs> His face melts. Um, we, I was I was shocked again by how epic the extras and the scenes were like they don't do long sets oh, yeah. like that anymore for movies no, especially no, no, not no. with that many extras but this is this is steven spielberg you know what i'm saying i know but i'm just i'm just saying like i was like remember like watching it again because i hadn't mm-hmm. watched it in a while i was like man these sets are impressive the number of extras is impressive john rise uh, davies gamley's in it which one is Gimli? He's his friend in Egypt, in Cairo. That is Gimli. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure enough. I am not okay. That and is I Gimli. believe he's going to be in the next, uh, the next one, too. Really? Mm-hmm. That's sure sweet. Enough. That's yeah. sweet. I like, we like the ones, I remember, because I remember us talking about this when Crystal Skull came out and we watched it. And we were like, eh. Mm-hmm. We like the ones with the biblical undertones the best. Yeah, which is weird because uh, there's he has deference for it, which I think is what does very that mean? what do you mean? Like deference? Is that not a word? I'm sure it is, but I don't know what it means. I'm gonna Google it and make sure I'm using it uh, right. You and the flipping Google, the Google dictionary. Um he calls it mythology, Hebrew mythology. Isn't that what he calls it or something like that? Um I think the you know, the second one, 
I don't know if it was I, of the Indiana Jones movies. I watched two. I, I will rewatch two. Yeah, it's it. the, the two with the biblical undertones. You're right. But it's I, deference. It's humble submission and respect. Oh, yeah, he does. Well, I mean, yeah, he's he knows that something's for real well, there he, then because yeah. at the end. He's like, close your eyes or you're going to be dead. Yeah, close your eyes. No kidding. I mean, because you see the thing where the where the arc burns the logo, the Nazi logo off the thing. Oof. Wild. Yeah. And then in the uh, the Crystal Skull, when they're in the store room storage building, and there's the arc is in the storage building, that box is in there. Yeah, that was funny. So it was. This it, is, yeah, I'm this sorry, is PG. Ahead. This is PG. Um, but this is PG before there was a PG thirteen. This is PG. Yeah, this is PG in the eighties. This is maybe PG thirteen. I really, I don't. I think it would teeter talk. Bad words. There might be a bad word, but there's I, a there's, lot of peril. A lot of peril. The dude getting chopped up by the airplane. There's Great. a lot of peril. Um, it was. We saw that, that at Disney, by the way. They, that they scene, redid that on Yes. Do you remember that? Because I, I was yeah. I was talking to Trevin about how that used to be. It used to be a stunt show that you could watch. Yes, we watched it. And my dad, when my dad went with me and Nathan, we watched we, it. We I watched it. it with. I was there at a different time than you, but yeah. I and I watched that with the group of people that I was with. It was so well done. Yeah. They did the plane. Yeah, the plane spun around and it caught on fire and everything. It was yeah. insane. And then the the ball. Yes. Is him being they did chased, chased by the ball. By the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, but all of the practical effects are so cool in it. The story is so fun. He cares so much about the, this, be- but it belongs in a museum. Yes. Like that that's type of all stuff. He ever says belongs in the museum. It belongs, Everything in, belongs a museum. in a museum. Yeah. That Belloc guy. He's bad news bears. Yeah. I mean, he was and he isn't. He's at least he's not, you know, but he's working for Did the Did you Nazis, see that he so. was like dressed in like a white linen suit, like Jewish desert. garb when they were going to like open yes. the I was like, you're yeah. not a Levite priest. Exactly. Thank you very much. Do you know what happened when some <laughs> believers was... tried to keep the ark from falling off a car? He died dead. Exactly. I re- we because I had just read that story. Not too okay, I just so read for that. All in you the don't know that's that's in the Bible. Not where, too long ago, when they're moving the they're the moving ark. the ark when like they're not supposed to. Correct. And they're, in the Exodus, it in Deuteronomy, it tells you exactly exactly. And how so to move in the Samuel, they're moving the ark in the wrong way on a cart. It's not supposed to be on a cart. It's supposed to be carried. First of all, yes. Go ahead, Anna, and and then happens. a guy reaches out to touch it so it doesn't fall, and he drops yeah, dead. Drops dead. And they're all like, what? He was trying to keep it from falling. And God's You're like, not well, carrying be- it right in the first place. <laughs> Darn too. And so they me. leave it there for like 10 years or like so, a period of time. And so the so- guy, I'm sorry, go you go. No, no, no. Do you know what's supposed to be in the ark? The Ten Commandments. And I don't two know. other things. An Moses omer bones? of uh, the staff and an omer of uh, manna. Hmm. I believe that's the three things. You have cool. to double check me, but I think so. Cool. Anyway, what were you going to say? No, I just, I thought that was, so, that was, that was the bit that got me this time watching it. I'm Him like, really? Up, is that- he, he's dressed as a Levi priest, like my guy. Like that's going to help. That this is, this garb's going to keep you safe. Yeah, that's hilarious. Well, he's mentioned, he's like, oh no, we're carrying it the right way. Oh, do they really carry it he may, with they acacia carry, sticks? So then he's read his they Bible. They carry then. it the right way. Because that guy's it like the right way because you have to be yeah, no, Levites and all that. Kind of yeah, stuff. but he like the the quote quote right way. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that bit was interesting. The girl yeah, and, bless that poor girl in that dress. And who holds on to a submarine for eight hundred miles? Me. Like, doesn't he hang on to a submarine? I was up and down. When we were watching that movie. I, yeah. He's like, anyway, that's all right. He's cool though, man. Good. He is cool. So yeah, Indiana Jones, Indiana, dad. I know. I would love to, I, I loved watching it and listening to it, listening to it with my headphones on and the music. And I was just trying to be aware of the tonal differences in the music. Is, the music is beautiful. It's really good. And uh, the next one is John Williams's last score, really? but he's like almost a hundred. So Trevin was kept talking about how well paced it was. Oh yeah, that Perfect. was such a long movie, but he didn't get bored of it at all. It was all. long. 
I guess it was long. It's like two hours, yeah. isn't it? Wow. Awesome. Well, I enjoyed it. And um, I think it's close to PG. I mean, there is some peril, so you would need to check out yeah, your kids. I think, and- I think it's peril and then uh, CGI face melting. Really, Here's really bad CGI face melting. I know. Okay, me as a dad, growing up as a kid of the 80s, in the 80s. I graduated. You let me watch this when I was young. I would go and say, oh, I can't wait for my kids to watch this movie I watched in the 80s. And then we would watch it and I would go, what was I thinking? This movie is horrible to watch as a kid. You did that so so many times. Flash Gordon, you did that. Oh my gosh. I was like, oh, I didn't know. You're like, we're done watching this. (laughs) Turn it off. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. So I think that's a thing to do. I mean, we remember these with such nostalgia, but I think it's important for a parent to go back and rewatch it. Yeah. With 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 um, critical eyes now to think, can my ten year old watch this movie? Fair. Because I don't know that you would let a ten year old. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. It's a lot deeper than you would think it was. Yeah. It's definitely it's definitely for adults, but fun for young for. Uh, Older kids. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. yeah I, I would agree with you. Five gold idols. And you know why? Five bags the, of sand with a little actually, bit of yeah. Well, after watching it again, I just keep thinking everything else has tried to recapture this. So many. Like Uncharted. Uh, and it, they Tomb can't Raider. because it feels fake. Um, it feels like we're trying to make an Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. I and liked I liked the to- the new Tomb Raider with the I liked arrows. Both the Tomb Raiders. I liked, me, I liked all three I liked three the of Tomb Raiders. Those. Uncharted, we didn't finish. I didn't finish it either. But I... It wasn't good. I like that, you know, he doesn't have the gadgets. He's just got a gun and a whip in his brain. And in the... In but the your end fist of, in never this runs one, out of bullets. Got like a tape measure and his little pencil in his book. And he's doing the math in his head on how far... Yeah, he's, and then he to, uses the thing... Yeah, the, the astrolabe dependent. is that what it's dependent. called? The pendant, the thing with the with the because he he measured everything mm-hmm. in the room to figure out oh, where they should. Oh, and then he uses the thing that people use to navigate the stars. Yeah, I don't know to what figure it's out called. where they should go. I don't. Is it an yeah. astrolabe? I don't know. I'm full of all of the interesting words I know. today. This Deference. is like the dictionary edition. I'm gonna. This is why I'm the queen here. of malapropisms because I googled no. deference and it popped you... up as difference. Because I'm the king of malapropisms. I had an English teacher who said, Turner, did you mean to put this in here? Because if you meant to use this as a malapropism, it's fantastic. If you didn't, you're an ignorant clod. <laughs> I was like, I meant to do it. I was totally an ignorant clod. I did not mean to do it, but it just turned out. It was, I was right. Yeah. It's an astrolabe. Awesome. All right. Well, there we go, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indiana Jones. I'm glad for a, an oldie, but a goodie. And like I said, uh, Paramount Plus, or you can rent it, or you can purchase a DVD at a used DVD store and probably watch it. Woo! Yeah. Hey, and, I. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And no, what? Go ahead. No, I was trying to change the subject. Go. I I guess because Steven Spielberg produced it, George Lucas doesn't Lucify Indiana Jones movies. I'm glad. Yeah. What are you getting ready to say? Same. Um, I loved Supergirl in the world, the woman of woman. I loved it so tomorrow. much it deserves me to say it again. I loved Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. So Hannah and I read a comic book called What She Just Said. It's written by Tom King, and the artist is a lady who I cannot, I'm sure I'll butcher her name. Lopez? Bilquis Evely is her name. I'll open and- one. It it deserves to be said because the art is it is literally art. Gorgeous. It's literally and art. The colorist's last name is Lopez, and the his name is Matt Matthias Lopez. He needs to be talked about as well because the colors are just amazing. How many issues was this, Hannah? Eight. So it's eight issues. Is this a trade yet? It is a trade. It's actually available to read for free on the Kindle app if you have Amazon Prime. Hey, and it's I su- it rocks. I see. Su- I want to get this as a hard hard uh, back, honestly. Yeah, as a trade. Is, yeah. So they are turning this either into a movie or a TV show. TV show. It just needs to be a TV show and just do eight episodes. Is that what 
I mean, I don't know. No, that's me saying. It. That's me saying it. That's James what I think Gunn it should be. And, yeah, James Gunn announced this during his big old uh, announcing of what mm. we're doing with the DC Universe and DC and Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow is going to be one. So Dude, this Supergirl in this is so, so cool. Let me give it a little bit more background. Okay, I'm this sorry. Came out, it was came back over two years during the middle. It came out, started in the middle of COVID. So 2021 really? and ended in 2022, which is why it was in my top five books of, of 2022, because it ended in 2022. Yeah. Uh, like March or April of last year. Um, and it's eight issues. And Hannah, give us the lowdown. Yeah. So what happens? Um, we open at... And this young girl who is not young at the time of telling the story, but is young at the time of when the story occurred. So it's like a grandma and something It's like a grandma sitting down and telling her grandchildren a story of her youth, essentially. And what it is, um, her father was murdered by a king's guard or whatever, like a man who's in charge of going around and making sure that the people care about the king um just like murdered in cold blood um and she seeks vengeance she's the youngest of six brothers and she is the only person in her family that seeks Ruthie. goes to seek vengeance for her father um in that she runs into supergirl supergirl is on this planet because it has a red sun and what we know mm-hmm. about supergirl is that yellow like supergirl superman crypto right the yeah. reason that they have superpowers is because our sun is different than their sun. So the yellow sun gives them superpowers. Girls on her 21st birthday, she decides to go on a bender. She wants to go to a planet <laughs> on a red sun so that she can hilarious? have herself a little drinky poo, which That's like, girl, exactly. pop off. <laughs> I ain't mad. Go for it. That's awesome. But that's true. That's why she's there. So that's she why she's there. a little she's, bit toasty. She's there for a drinky poo on her 21st. Hey, mm-hmm. props to you waiting until then to go to the red planet. No they kidding. Don't... I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah. Because she's she's grown. What are they going to yeah. say when she shows up at this planet? Sorry. No, thank you, ma'am. No, she mm-hmm. she's she's yeah. a big girl. Yeah. She gets asked if by this girl, what is her name? Ruthie. Ruthie. I never. Oh, mm-hmm. that's a tender. Spelled that's R-U-T-H-Y-E. Tender. Y-E. Ruthie. Mm-hmm. Supergirl gets asked by Ruthie, um, hey, avenge my father for me. Murder Help this me man. Track down and Help kill. me track down and kill this guy. Yeah. And Supergirl's like, no. Nah. Go home. You don't need to be doing this. Ultimately, what happens, Crypto gets hit by arrows, as does Supergirl. Ruthie gets her to say, no. Supergirl gets them to safety. The guy escapes in her rocket. On accident. On an accident. Yeah, and so the she rest can't, of because Supergirl can't fly away. No, because it's a red planet. And so yeah. the rest of the eight episodes are them trying to catch up with this guy who is absolutely the a terrible He's person. a bad like mamma jamma. Him and these brigands, they wipe out planets. His name's Krim. Yes, Krim of the something hills. Yeah. Of the yellow hills. And, um, so it's, yes, each issue is something else about their, um, about their searching for him. This is the, this is the one that I was like, this just needs to be framed. The picture from one of the, is that with the horse? Yes. Yeah. Um, Oh my goodness. Comet. Is that what his horse's name is? So what happens is Ruthie learns from Supergirl about being a good person and about loving people and caring for people about seeking justice rather than vengeance Mm -hmm. about um, the horrors of the world. Um, Because ultimately Krim, who's a bad guy ends up with, uh, with a group of bad guys, pirates, basically extra, extra bad guys who go around murdering everyone on the planet, unless you can pay them money. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's really the, Some the of it is pretty. Purples oh, that was, was horrible. Disgusting. Yeah. That was basically a racial issue. That was. You know, we'll pay you to wipe out these people that we don't that like. That we don't color. like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they tried to hide it. Yeah. Um, 
the way this is written, if there, okay, first of all, there are a lot of words. Ruthie is, so Ruthie is our narrator. We hear everything from her point of view. And what? She has a lot to say. Well, sh and she, what I've gathered, her planet is very formal in language. Okay. And so that's how she tells the story. Right. Because even in the way that she speaks, she says a lot of words it's to say like a little bit a of things. It's like a folk tale. It's, yeah. It feels like if, um, if a hillbilly, like that's what we are, we're hillbillies. So mm. we're not. We're and not she's a hillbilly. She'd say, she Ruthie is. would be like, I'm a hillbilly. Exactly. I'm a rock farmer. Where to tell their story to their children. You know, if my grandma would sit down and tell a story with all of the ins and outs and every little nook and cranny of what happened, this is what this would be. But the, the arts, the, the, the words are so good. They have so much to say in it. Um, and Ruthie does not take no for an answer. Uh -uh. She's like, she's, you're going to help me avenge my father. You're going to help me find Krim of the Yellow Hills. Just amazing. Um, this character. And she's got this sword that he killed her dad with, and she's taking it everywhere she goes. Actually, on one of the issues, Supergirl ends up, gets transported by magic, which Superman and Supergirl, and they can't do magic, to a planet with a green, a kryptonite sun. And it was created as a planet to kill <laughs> Cal. Which is funny because she mentions this multiple she's, times. She's like, comic everybody goes, hates People him. People hates him. <laughs> Why does everybody hate Cal? Yeah, because so one by one person's actually out to get Supergirl because they don't like Superman. Yeah. Yeah. And she even she Ruthie mentioned that she's like, I wonder if they just think because they cower at Superman because they feel inferior and feel weak. But then they see this girl and their chest. Oh, yes. up, exactly. And they're like, oh, I can take her. I can. No, take you the can't. Girl. Yeah, well, you can't, can't, my guy. And actually, uh, uh, Kara, the Supergirl, is she? She's, listen, she she's she put, a, put a beat down on these guys without any superpowers, and's walking with arrows stuck in her chest without Rowing any superpowers the boat to get them to the other side without, so that she, they can get help for. Yes, without crypto. superpowers. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, that whole entire thing with on the green, the Kryptonite planet. Oof. He said they they. Cal was there and barely survived 45 minutes. And they're like, well, how did he survive? And they go, well, the rest of the Justice League came and helped him. So they're on this planet for like eight or nine hours. Nine or, yeah. And Ruthie And Ruthie has kills to a couple a dinosaurs. Creature. Yeah. And then another creature's coming and she gets, And you Supergirl know, stops it with a hand. Yeah. Yeah. So it was so good. Can I so read good. for you like something from the opening to kind of Absolutely. share the language? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so this is Ruthie sharing her story. Allow me then to continue on the more traditional path of storytelling to better illuminate our beginnings in order that you might understand our ends. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty much all of it. Yeah. Krim of the Yellow Hills was likely a king's agent. Yes. It's so good. And um, now you know why I'm stoked for this, the Wonder Woman book coming out. If, with this guy this is the same gentleman the same guy who wrote the um mr miracle big barda book we read oh that book's fun yeah same that book was fun yeah same same author um this is the most beautiful book we've read in a while it's gorgeous it that, reminds me of god country oh the art does in the coloring oh uh, maybe i think this has a much better coloring i think this art is a hundred times better than God country. I'm sorry. Don't come at me. God country to, lovers, but like, this, the splash pages, a splash page is a, where you open up and you have like a sit on a bus picture. stop. Yeah. I'm looking at that one right here right now. Honestly, the, I, I did reach out to the artists of this and said, will you please come on our show? And she never responded, <laughs> but you know, I'm going to try that from now on, you know? Okay. I love that. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to see so if they have this book. I hope you do in the, one of the episode issues. You do get her history, how she came to be, and how she's the only person that survived after the planet. Um, that was a they, devastating book to read while she was fleeing mm -hmm. the magic. Yeah, Woo, Nelly. Yeah. yeah. So and she takes man when she's she's like anybody got any reds? 
on the bus. Oh yeah. Red, like, red give kryptonite. me your drugs. <laughs> give me your drugs. I know you got red kryptonite. Yeah. And then she it's teaches so- Ruthie how to wash her hands. Yes, because Ruthie had never washed her. Because hands. Ruthie had never washed her hands, and that was something that Ruthie like mentions at the end of the series. She was like, through all of my time working with her and like following her around, what I have learned is that her act of restraint, yes, is her true superpower, because mm. she slows down to walk at your step, and she does not burn you with her eyes. She just gives you her gaze. She does yes. not. She warms her breath instead of smoke blows ice at you so that she can converse with you. So how are we going to do this in a TV show slash movie? Dude. Are we going to have to have a narrator? There's going to have to be voiceover, I think. You do? It's a sort it's, of like in it's voiceover Shawshank, heavy. Sort of like Shawshank Redemption. How maybe uh, he, you know, you have stuff maybe. that he still does a little bit of. I mean, but this has an awful lot of dialogue. This has an awful lot of dialogue and it is a lot of, well, I could also see it being, I think it does have to be narrator narrated and it could be, I honest, like I could see it being old lady Ruthie because old lady Ruthie's at the very end. Yeah. But you don't know. Yeah. You sort of get the hint, but you don't really see old lady Ruthie. And what happens is the story that she wrote is full of nonsense than the way the story ends right help me understand that because that was what i was confused about does she, is she saying that she just bleh, at the beach no. no what happened is they make it sound like they killed him but, but they, didn't. they put him in the phantom zone for 200 years and then he comes out and she kicks him in the face <laughs> and that's it turns around walks away yeah all of that time yeah. I like I like that Supergirl comes back and she's just like two years older. Oh yeah, it doesn't look any different. She looks like she's twenty five, like maybe. Like her hair maybe looks a little slightly different. Well, no, Ruthie, she looks Ruthie's, she looks been more grown up. Years. Her hair's shorter and yes. Ruthie looks like she's five hundred. Right. Well, Ruthie is two hundred and some change because it said it'd been a hundred years and then he took another hundred years. So he's been in the Phantom Zone for two hundred years the the bad guy so yeah so they do catch up with him but i'm telling you folks read this book you it's can so if you have good. amazon prime download it on the kindle app and get it on like an ipad or something because it's it's beautiful and it's definitely a good read <laughs> um and what about the one where the giant is the giant's just crying oh, she just gives him a hug yeah yeah and she and then, that's when she goes and holds that herself was a girl the sun. giant though right that was a lady yep. giant because she was yeah. away fighting a war and couldn't save her family right from the brigands the, the battle with the picks which is a an allusion to a uh, um adam strange who's another character in dc who tom king just wrote a story about called the i story also Adventure. liked the um the what i'm trying to think of it can't remember oh when she the graves oh and she buries them all she's like would you mind if you would let me do this yes yes because the guy's like it's my duty i have to do it he's like and and she's like he's like and because all of these these people need individual graves i don't know which one's my daughters Mm. but they deserve dignity and she she finds it by looking at her dna yeah and p.s i've okay i finished it let's check and make sure it's to your liking by the way, I know which one's your daughter's. Yes. Like she just cares so much. I could cry. I cried yeah. some reading it. It's a great book. I, she and I'm so Ruthie glad I, lot. I re I reread it because it I got more from it the second time around. I'm excited to read it. I I was telling Trevin that's what we were doing this time, and he's like, um, uh, and then I was like reading it in the car, like crying. I was like, you have to read this book. Heck yeah, it's great. Come on, Trevin, get with the ball game. <laughs> anyway he likes the he likes horror stuff yeah did you get the second issue of seasons have teeth yes i haven't read it yet oh okay but i have it all right and i also have something epic trevin bought oh. that oh read that yeah that's i need really, to read both of them that's something I've that's been, deep that's something epic is deep yeah you talked about that last time and said that mm-hmm. i'd like it and i asked trevin he's like oh i already bought it oh good awesome I'm good like, deal Ugh. And he what got me, yeah, f- he got me seasons at teeth number two. I thought that was sweetie. Yeah, that's great. I read it. That was one of the first ones I read. 
Wasn't All on your right. list though. Uh, huh? Wasn't on your list. Excuse me. No, but it is now. I was. No. Excuse me. I'm I mean, allergic. On your list of comics to share with us today. No, it wasn't. I had to. I had to choose. So I chose Superman and Fair Barbaric because Barbaric ended, and I chose Season of Teeth the last time. That's true. That's All right, true. Hannah. So, what are we going to do? Tally yeah. ho. Friends, thank you so much for hanging out with us. It's been so sweet to have you with us on our little corner of the interwebs. Um, we are glad to have you. Yes. Um, our podcast is um, edited and uploaded by yours truly. Our YouTube is maintained by Dear Pops. Our intro Woo-hoo. music is created by Brock Will Nason Music. You should check him out. Follow him on Instagram. If you live in the Nashville or surrounding area, um, he does concerts pretty much every week. Um, check out his Instagram and go see one of them. He's pretty great. Um, our in Mm, that's our intro music our um, art. art was made by nate turner who just graduated he walked he's a graduate he grown <laughs> he'd be doing big guy stuff hey nate we love you thanks for doing that no. for us bud yeah that's and it. that's all we got so guys thank you for hanging with us and yes. until next time we will catch, catch you on, you the, on the flippity flop, flop. Bye, bye sweet guys. friends And Facebook pals, thanks for hanging with us. Yeah, YouTubers. For you. That's right. Share, share, like our podcast on whatever apps there is. Yes, all of them. <laughs> all of Bye. them. Bye.